Good evening, townspeople. Welcome to the uh, meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to move right into it. Uh, any announcements at this point? None? None. Okay. Uh, the uh, Board of Assessors will not be here, is that correct? Uh, they will not be here, but I can also speak to the uh, work plan that Fine. we developed yep. uh, with the assistance of the financial officers in the town. Okay. You want to go through that now? or? Uh, well, there's public forum. Do you want to take a public forum? I don't know if Lydia is here for that. No, you're not. Okay. No. Okay. In approval of the minutes. Okay. Motion to approve Board of Selectmen minutes of 13 September. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, okay, posted business. We go into that, Marlene, right away? Or yes, so we'll else? just wait for the Ag Committee. Bob Wagner will be uh, speaking on behalf of the Agricultural Committee regarding a proposed community garden. Uh, the, the assessors were going to meet with the Board of Selectmen, and this, this just goes back um, a few weeks ago. Um, the Board of Assessors have been following the work plan that um, their office set up with the uh, treasurer, collector, and town accountant. And this is regarding reports and forms that are, are due to the Department of Revenue. And most of the reporting is done through the assessor's office. Mm -hmm. uh, but most importantly, just want to point out that uh, to date, the assessors have filed those, those reports by the due dates that we, we projected out. And mm -hmm. this was set up with representatives from DOR. Uh, okay. back earlier in the late winter, early spring. Uh, the next, what we're looking to do is have the tax classification hearing. Um, we had set a goal of, of November 15th. Actually, that's going to be held on November 29th. Okay. okay. And then lastly, um, there is a, a LA-5 that is submitted to DOR. That is projected for November 15th. And then lastly is the recap sheet, which will be submitted. And we're looking at the middle of November for that as well. OK, so that puts us in compliance with? At this point, yes, it does. Excellent. OK. With the tax rate approval of middle of December? A tax rate? Uh, well, the tax classification hearing will be held November 29th to be setting the tax rate at that time. OK. Already. Oh, what you're looking at is the prior year. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, I think you, December. Yeah. There's the prior year, and then year. there's the proposed fiscal year 17, the far right hand column. It's mine's blank. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I had made a copy of this for Jeff. We were talking about it earlier in the day, and I'm certainly glad to share it with all of you if you'd like to look at it. But I just, I, I knew the assessors weren't, they right, had notified sure. me yesterday that they weren't. Are there any, any issues that the board should be aware of? I'm not aware of any issues okay. at this time. November 29th will be the hearing. Tax classification yep. hearing. Great. Thank you. Good. All right. Special town meeting. As you know, we have special town meeting tomorrow night. Um, mm. There are three articles. And a uh, handout you've received, well, you haven't, you, those of you who haven't received your packets, I have those. There is a handout that's available to the, uh, it'll be in your packet and also available to the uh, voters. And I just wanted to put my hands on that. Okay. Take a look at it. Actually, three articles for a special town meeting. Right, three okay. articles. There, there's a handout. Here it is right here. So this is the handout. This is on the back of the handout. Mm -hmm. This is the impact on the tax rate. Do you have a copy of that? I do. Oh, okay. Thank you. So um, hopefully the voters will find that, that helpful. Okay. Town Council, the board will meet at 6 o'clock in the community room with the Finance Committee. 
or shortly thereafter. Yeah, um, and this is a community room of the Hatfield, Hatfield Elementary, Elementary School. School. Just, I'm not sure when this That's will correct. air, but just to make sure everybody realizes. Right. I know we've been publishing it around town, but that right. the tomorrow's meeting at the elementary school, yes. not at the high school. As you know, the third article is to amend Article 14 of the annual town meeting warrant, um, and, and that changes out the remediation process of the former center school. And I had talked with <coughs> town council last week, and we were anticipating having uh, some type of, of letter of support from, from the developers to the attorneys. I have not received that. Um, with the, the approval of Article 3 and having that letter from the developers, the board could, is posted to reconvene after the special town meeting and award the, the revised offer from the developer. So just mm -hmm. need a few minutes after town meeting to reconvene mm -hmm. and take that up. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions regarding... The warrant articles? Nope. Well, I spent a couple of minutes just going over them again for folks mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Yeah, if you want. I don't, I don't see any need personally, but it's posted and uh, just it's up to you. Couple, uh, it only showed twice before town meeting. Pardon? It only showed twice before town meeting. Well, it'll be on YouTube. Go ahead. Again, three articles. First two have to do with center, excuse me, with the uh, town hall and the renovations. Uh, the first article addresses those items mandated by town meeting, excuse me, by the uh, Department of Public Safety Architectural Access Board that we have a deadline on. Uh, it, it, certainly, it authorizes the uh, town to borrow under Proposition 2.5, which allows us to borrow beyond our normal taxation rate for this particular project uh, to fund uh, the work necessary to do that. And really, just uh, three things, uh, an elevator, a compliant ramp on the south side of the building, uh, and a sprinkler system to comply with the fire code. Uh, the second uh, article addresses some of the concerns raised by the Council on Aging when we first uh, brought forward Articles, uh, an article concerning uh, town hall renovation. It specifically addresses their two primary concerns, since we haven't done really a full requirements definition for either the Council on Aging and or the museum. That's been delayed to a, a subsequent phase. But their two primary uh, issues had to do with an exterior ramp on the south side of the building going to the bottom floor, a compliant exterior ramp. And secondly, uh, to accommodate the elevator and lost space due to the elevator uh, in their kitchen area, uh, it was expanding the current footprint of the kitchen into what's now the building inspector's office and relocating the building inspector to the former police chief's office. Again, uh, the source of funds for this would be also under Prop 2 and a half. However, we will need a second vote regarding this, and, and that is on the election day uh, and now <clears throat> ongoing in the uh, period running up to uh, the election day. There is a ballot vote to authorize the use of Proposition Two and a Half. It's both a, a town, town meeting vote as well as a, a ballot vote to do that. Uh, if we take up this second article regarding the town hall renovation concerning that ramp and the kitchen area for COA, that will require a, a, an article uh, to be voted on subsequently. And the reason for that is when we first uh, addressed the requirements for town hall, uh, the town clerk required information regarding what uh, we would be putting on the ballot by a date very early in August. 
at the time, we didn't have the cost information about the second ramp for the uh, uh, Council on Aging, nor the cost information on relocation of the building inspector and uh, expanding their footprint for the COA kitchen. So again, that would require a, a second vote. Now, if the first article fails, uh, there really is no second article. Is, because the first article uh, has, to, has to do with the elevator. And if that fails, then there is no impact on the COA kitchen area. Uh, so it, there needs to be, and hopefully will be, uh, a positive vote on, on both of these. Uh, town hall is center of our town government. Uh, these are code requirements that we're trying to address, particularly in Article 1, with respect to accessibility and fire safety. Uh, we're trying to bring this back because our current deadline for completion is the 1st of September of 18. Uh, we need to really get going uh, with all the contracting actions that be associated with being able to execute this program. So we're certainly looking for positive support. At the end of the day, we. We need to do this to bring the building into compliance. Uh, it's not the Board of Selectmen's town hall, it's the town's town hall, and uh, hope, hope to receive your support. The third article has to do with uh, the center school. You recall at the May town meeting, the article that was prepared by the Hatfield Redevelopment Authority had the town doing the remediation uh, for center school. That is uh, asbestos and, and those hazardous materials kinds of things. Uh, recall at the time the thinking was this would perhaps entice more uh, individuals or more developers to propose a bid for the center school. Uh, as it turned out, there was only one bid and that bidder offered to pay up to $300,000 to the town for that remediation. So uh, this shouldn't be looked at as a cost savings or anything for, for the town. Perhaps it will save the developer uh, some, some money, but it does facilitate the developer in his work and being able to accommodate the remediation on a, on a timeline and, and, and a phasing that's consistent with his program of uh, work on center school. So it, it works to the benefit of all. We're off the hook in terms of contracting and taking care of that and trying to manage schedules uh, along with the developer. Puts it all in the developer's hands and uh, takes us out of the picture. And those are just the three articles for tomorrow's uh, special town meeting and mm -hmm. ask your support to them. Well, Rooney? Okay, a letter of resignation from myself uh, has already been submitted. Uh, it's been made known to uh, townspeople uh, after making it known to my colleagues and, uh, and such. Uh, so uh, the second half of that uh, topic uh, deals with the proposed election and um, when that will be held. And we have some information that uh, indicates a, a proposed breakout. Lydia, you want to go through that? The no. No. We going to take this up tonight, or are we taking it up next week? Why can't it be taken up? Okay. All right. Bye. Oh. Okay. Well, I yeah. I mean, Lydia is here. Um, if if we had questions, I I think what what Pat's referring to as as the second part of uh, the official. Um, submission of resignation effective the end of November is um, the thought process of having a special election to, to uh -huh. fill that seat, um, which is still has a year and a half, rough, roughly. Just about, um, yeah. Left, left. So um, Marlene, I, I, I don't want to speak for you, but in conversations with the various select board members, had a conversation with Lydia just to get a timeline Get an idea sort of going of what, of what the at. process was mm -hmm. for a special election, 
uh, for those folks that are interested in actually running for the office, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting nomination paper, just like a, like you would have to if it were a normal May election, but you know, the, obviously the time constraints or the, the times are different because the election is, is looking to be held approximately the middle of January. So all those yeah, other... The timelines are the yeah. same. Right. It's, it's just, it's just the gotta, months, the... You've yeah, insert yeah. that timeline right. whatever right. date you pick. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. Um, for me personally, I think um, my, my thoughts, and we, we haven't discussed this yet, but I'll just... Uh, my opinion on this is I, I think it's important that we hold a special election. I think the seat needs to be filled. Um, it, it's only fair to the townspeople and that there'd be three select board members. Um, given the, uh, get, <laughs> sorry John, um, given the amount of time that's between um, the resignation taking effect and the next annual election, it's a six month period. I think we've got a lot going on in, in that time frame. So I think it's important that uh, the town be able to elect a third selectman or woman select person. Um, to fill out the seat, you know, that as we're getting into the budget season, um, we'll be into the process of a, of a new uh, police chief. So you know, there's there's some important things coming up that I think should have going the, on. Uh, mm -hmm. um, a full board's uh, attention. So the other, Lydia. the other. Oh, um, I, I did. I just did want to mention that the cost of an election and whether you decide to go forward or whatever. The cost of an election is about $2,800 to hold an election. I do not have that in my budget to do a special election. So if you are looking to do a special election, I need some assurances from the Finance Committee that there's some money somewhere that we can hold a special election. Because, but yeah, so I just, you know. Well, if yeah, to your, not to your point directly, but related. Uh, if the vote is positive on Articles 1 and 2 tomorrow, and, the, and Article 1 on the current ballot, uh, it would be another reason to have a special election to close on the funding for the Article 2. Uh, the COA uh, priority items of the second uh, ramp and the uh, makeup of additional space uh, given the impact of the elevator on their current kitchen. So that could be a second item that would could piggyback that election, uh, be the vote on the borrowing for for that, that project. Uh, to your point, uh, I think we'll have a little better picture here very shortly about where we stand financially, and we ought to be able to come up somehow with that. Yeah, and just, I think you've got the schedule in there, but mm -hmm. if, if, for example, the date we threw out, January 17th, as a just so I could set up the calendar, because you need to know the date before you set up the calendar. Mm -hmm. You need to notify the town clerk's office by November 14th right. that there's going to be, you know, you want to have a special election on January 17th, and then things will go from there. Be assured that will take place, the timing that you're looking for and a commitment to that, and so that you can move forward uh, with the, uh, the overall schedule. Yeah. I don't think any of us have any problem with that. That's, that's all, right. all I had on it, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, the second part of uh, topic four, do you want to deal with the proposed election now and confirm it, or do you want to wait? What's your recommendation? Uh, I don't know. Well. 
seems like a. The, the, the first. Worried about your twenty eight hundred dollars, Lydia. Hmm. I don't have. Well, sorry. Right. We'll take care of you. <clears throat> What's in uh, left in the uh, selectman's expense account, Marlene? Do you are you familiar with that at this point? I. Don't have Just the so we can make some kind of commitment. Me. No, um, okay. okay right. I don't have it with okay. me. Okay. Well, you know what? Why don't we? Um, well, we didn't make a motion, so I don't. Not that we need to table it. So our next, within your guidelines that you have here, really the ball's got to get rolling by November fourteenth. Right. Uh, we have our special we, town meeting tomorrow. We have right. another meeting. We have a meeting on November 9th, so we could take it. So up I, I think by then we will have reached yes. out to the various parties and you know the finance committee Maybe, and other yeah. things. Um, if that's okay with you, Pat. Um, we'll be seeing and, the finance committee and Jeff, tomorrow so. evening. So we well, that's what I was thinking at our it. meeting. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we know that uh, should this be the schedule we, we wish to follow, we know November 14th. Mm -hmm. And twenty eight hundred dollars needs to be delivered to Lydia. Yeah. <laughs> Cash. <Show> okay. <laughs> I think he, once again you can rest assured it will be taken care. <laughs> Pat will pay. Uh, pardon? No. Pat will. I don't think so. Um, Thanks, Lydia. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Marlene, do you want to go into uh, reports or? Um, should we take up uh, Bob Wagner's here from the Ag Committee? Sure. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's under topic, topic one. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bob. Bob, thank hey, you as hey. always. Hi, uh, Bob Wagner, uh, Linseed Road. I'm the chair of the town's Ag Commission. And over our last two meetings, we've had discussions about the town-owned farm ground on Billings Way, which has been rented on an yeah, annual basis, as we understand it, by, by the Board of Selectmen. Um, and however, this year it wasn't uh, utilized. I don't know if it was rented and the farmer, because of the drought, decided not to use it. But that got us to thinking that perhaps um, if the board were interested in uh, willing to um, uh, provide us with uh, the, uh, not necessarily the assurance, but at least the, the idea that you might be interested in this, we would begin to pursue looking into whether or not uh, there was interest in town and what it would take to establish uh, community gardens on that property. If not the entire property, uh, you know, some portion thereof, maybe some of it could continue to be rented to a farmer and we utilize uh, a portion of it to set up uh, community garden plots, um, which are very popular in other communities in the mm -hmm. neighboring area. And um, it was pointed out by a couple of the members of our committee that, you know, we have more and more folks uh, in communities that don't necessarily, I mean, we live in a farming community. Everybody's got a backyard that's got great soil on it or in it, but um, you know, with the Hatfield Village, um, with the new Meadows uh, development on Elm Street, and then some of the subdivisions, even Primrose Path and, um, and uh, Plantation Road, uh, the plantation area, that there may be people that would be very interested in having a community garden, and maybe even some community groups would ha be interested, like the Senior Center having one or the school could have one of the plots uh, for their uh, garden. So before we went into doing the research on, you know, what other communities have done in terms of how they've uh, decided, you know, a lottery system, if there is more demand than there are plots, uh, how large they are, how they handle, uh, how we might handle water back there, we wanted to see if this would be something the board would even be interested in uh, considering, and if so, then we would uh, take this winter to do that research. I'm thinking that there's a good chance that it's not for 2017 growing season, but maybe 2018. So it could be that you, we would let you know you might rent it again for this upcoming growing season, but then we would begin to implement this for 2018, doing our research and 
uh, maybe some kind of survey of, yep. uh, of the residents to find out what the demand would be. I mean, we might be thinking of something or putting something together for which there's no major demand, but until we ask, we're, right. we're not going to know. Right. I personally think it's an excellent idea, and I think your approach of doing the homework first, then coming back and phasing it, as you, as you uh, have outlined, is, is on the mark. Uh, you know, I, I had the same reaction at first. Well, we're in Hatfield. Everyone has a garden. <laughs> but, uh, but you're right. There are, there are folks that uh, could certainly benefit and may well enjoy the experience. Uh, and being able then to di identify with more precision how it would be managed and how much land is actually needed and how much we could continue to rent would be very helpful. And, getting it organized right from the beginning. Right, so that's great. So that would be, those would be all the things that we would look into. Um, you know, there'll be, we have more than enough opportunity to, you know, discuss it with the folks in Northampton and, um, and I know there's others in, uh, in Amherst to just get a sense as to how they handle things like, you know, liability and, oh, you know, and who, you that. know, who takes care of what and all of that. So, um, uh, we're happy to to do that, and I and I think it's fair to say that we'd probably be looking at growing season 18. So, okay. yeah, I would echo what what yeah. Jeff what yeah. Jeff said, Bob. Yeah. I, I think it sounds like a sounds like a great idea. Okay. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. very much. Right. Good luck tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. A couple of things under DPW. Um, yes, is the union settlement agreement for the Board of Selectmen signature. Yep. Um, Have we already voted? Uh, yes, we did vote, I believe. We voted to accept and it. However, we did not sign it because we they had not signed it. They hadn't signed it. They have not exactly. signed it. Exactly. That's right. correct. So do we have it with us to, to sign or do you want to sign? In the signature folder, there's a copy okay. in your packet. Okay. Was reopened just to to cover the uh, clothing. Uh, what we're doing is uh, there was one item in the settlement agreement between the town and the DPW Teamsters uh, local, and it concerned uh, work-related clothing, and we conformed uh, the terms to agree with the union, and we had no problem with it. And. Essentially, it, it deals with uh, work-related clothing and uh, a stipend related to that. I have... Um, Is that the original? Yes. Right here. Okay. Yeah, he's signed right. here. I have it right here. Okay. Um, motion to... You want a motion? I'll, I'll, or? I'll, if we haven't, I thought we already did. Motion to approve the amended version of the settlement agreement between the town of Hatfield and Teamsters Local 404. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Marlene, is, I'm assuming this is the one you want signed, the one that's in, my, in the yes. signature packet? In the signature folder, yes. Okay, and all three of us, is that correct? Yes. Right. Excellent, okay. Let's take a moment to sign it so it'll be Thank done, you. all right? Jeff, if you'll put the note, the date on the bottom, okay? okay. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. And thank you, Jeff. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Ditto. Uh, you you have a, a request for a water abatement. Motion to approve abatement for water and sewer bill at 63 King Street in the amount of $1,731. Second. Yep, second. There was clearly an issue with the... The meter had to be replaced. Yeah, it was inspected there, uh, and, yeah. Yeah, the, the folks that residing at that address really had all the back background information and mm -hmm. history, and uh, it, it was a uh, clearly a... Uh, 
defective meter. So. You know, and along with that, the uh, DPW took the initiative to uh, check those mm. that needed to be checked based upon concerns that were raised. So to the best of our knowledge, uh, everything is in compliance of with where, where in terms of where it should be. That's, That's correct. This was the only corporate. meter. That was yeah. the only one. Only meter that turned out. That's right. Out of how many? I'm just curious. I forget. There were, I think, seven. seven? Oh, yes. no, no. I mean seven. meters overall oh. throughout the town. 1,000. Over 1,000. That's a pretty good. Uh, 300 something. Yeah. We, we have water virtually the whole town. Yeah. It's the yes. sewer that's only half. Yes. Mm. Half the time. Good. Okay. All right. So I'll put the signature. Just want to check. Contractor. It should be in the signature. And I have well. a. There's one more, Marlene, uh, authorizing signature for the contractor. In the, um, this is, I move to authorize the chair to sign the signature authorization contract with the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Okay. That's a $4,400 allocation to be used by the local cultural council between July 1st, 2016 and June 30th, 2017. Is there a second? Second. Right. All in favor? Uh, All in favor. Uh, Aye. Yeah. I have um, two that require uh, my signature. Right, the standard contract, which is the second page down at the bottom, yep. just above. I think okay, I'm going to sign that one first, and then we'll move and to the other one. All right, which okay. is. Um, and that's just a designation form. Marlene, this will um, once this is signed okay. and then submitted uh, to the necessary folks, we mm -hmm. our local cultural council cultural gets count, a copy of it. Yeah, yes. they'll make sure mm -hmm. they. Oh, yes. know that time frame, and I'm, I'm sure they do, but just, okay. Thank you. Today is the 25th. 25th. <clears throat> we already did this one. Not the one I'm looking for, Jeff, it's this one here. Okay, the uh, second one uh, that I am signing is uh, that's just part of the standard form, Fine. contract form. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't require a vote. It's okay. just, just signature. That just that gives the town accountant and, and treasurer collector authorization to um, have access to the information. Okay. And the next item is at our previous meeting, we had talked about, we've been continuing to talk about the, uh, yeah. the search for a, a full-time police anyway. chief. And we had talked about uh, taking a look, circling back at the outlined outline that was drafted, um, maybe you know, revise the dates. So oh. what I did was I, I took it upon myself to uh, look at January where we were uh, anticipating interviews to be scheduled between January 16th and February 3rd. So I, I pushed that out to February 6th through February 24th. Mm -hmm. I think the rest of that schedule will work. And then recommended, the, the committee would recommend finalists to the selectmen the week of February 27th as opposed to February 3rd. Any questions? I, I don't have any questions on the schedule. Um, I do have a question on the membership of the screening committee, however. A, a, and I'm, I'm just curious, and, um, and this is no reflection on anybody. I'm just curious as to why we do this, why there's two representatives from the finance oh, that's, committee. It's not. Oh, OK. But we, and this has nothing with this yeah, has nothing yeah. to do with the finance committee. That's I just correct. wanted to. No, I, th I think you lifted that from a previous. We, we used okay. this previously, so, so, right? Yeah, and we was, had looked at this. There's a couple of. Well, the, the only reason I was even bringing it up had nothing to do with the finance committee nor their members. It right. was uh, if it was something to do with the financial aspect of no. this, that mm -hmm. this isn't in their no. wheelhouse for that. That's up to and, the select. Actually, but, okay. 
you know, I was talking recently with Jeff about it, and I had said, why would we have two from no. the Finance Committee? Okay. One would well, be sufficient. It's only supposed sufficient. to be one. Oh, that, that's fine. Okay. And, um, and let's start with paragraph one. It's supposed to be Police Chief Screening Committee, not right, that's Selection Committee. Yep. And then one representative from the Finance Committee. Right, okay. Now, are we... I, I've identified, talked to, and have agreement from three people. Mm -hmm. uh, the former chief of police in Northampton has agreed to serve. Uh, Russ Sink Sinkowitz, mm -hmm. his relatives pronounce it differently. Uh, our own chief of police, who's retiring. Uh, very pleased to serve, and Mr. Fran Goodgen, uh, former superintendent of school, current member of the finance committee, and uh, cap capital budgeting and a hundred other things. Mm -hmm. He's quite willing to serve as well. And Great. I know you had... I, I've reached out to someone who I haven't gotten the, the commitment from yet. Um, okay. I, I, I will say I'm glad to see that... Um, uh, all three of those folks, by the way, I think are great, but uh, I'm glad to see that somebody from the police department, Chief Osley in this case, is actually going to mm. um, be part of that process um, because we asked that same, um, we asked that during the fire chief search yep. too, that, that yep. somebody from, that, the from the fire department or that they yep. were comfortable in having as a representative because I think that's important. So now, I have asked one other person, but I haven't. <laughs> Yeah, I and an I, answer so, to. all right, I'll, I'll, I'll get an answer um, from the person I've, I've asked, but um, who also has a, uh, the, the, the person I, I've asked who I haven't gotten a commitment from, I, I just don't want to use a name yet because That's you know, we don't know what's going to go on, uh, actually has a, um, a background in, in public safety. So I, th yeah, I think we should publicly state that uh, there is a, a closure date as far as people yeah, who want we'll to, to express their interest I hope regarding serve, serving on that committee. Mm -hmm. And if they would let you know, Marlene, is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. That well, would, I, I so have so one so. call pending to me. And yeah. I expect it in a day or so. Yeah, I, and I'll, I'll do the same thing. So I just want to... So we could close on it at our next yeah, meeting. At our, we I was going to ask yeah. if we could do that, yeah, take up fine. the I think, appointments I think that would be fine. on November 9th. Yeah, we yep. publicly let it not be known, and individually sure. uh, have uh, worked to, to uh, try to get people involved and so on. So um, that being the case, I think the next meeting yep. is, is we fine. Can, we can close and it. And we can put everything to uh, uh, a solid situation right. for, uh, for that process. And I think you've got a good team there. Mm. Absolutely. We will have. Yeah. Okay. Um, Are we can we okay just take that, a. Brian? I, I just, I, I mean, I already, I know the answer to this, but just, I, I guess I just want to say it out loud. So when we look at January, um, the reviewing of those particular resumes and, of course, the interview schedule, that, that first part is with the screening committee. I mean, it doesn't yeah. spell that out, but just, you know, and, just and wanted to say that, and then the recommended finalists would come to the board of select. And, and clearly, the intent is not to micromanage that group, but really yeah, just to give them some rough outline. Absolutely. We're looking for mm -hmm. a recommendation yep. by yep. about so-and-so date, and here's yep. some suggested milestones. Right. Not to lock them right. in. Right, right, but you gotta have like, how to do it. Just for the record, I don't consider that to be uh, micromanaging. I mean, it's us extending a sense of what we expect in terms of, uh, Handling the uh, the process, and I think, in fairness to that to that committee, they're looking for that as well. So that works out. Um, yeah. Okay, so we will uh, solidify that uh, process next, on at yeah. the next meeting, and then November. we'll move forward on that. Great. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All righty. Just one other thing. Um, in your packet, you have a, a draft copy of the advertisement, <clears throat> and we had. We had stated within that ad that uh, applications or resumes received by such and such a date would mm -hmm. be given first priority. Um, I've changed that to read screening process will commence January 9th, 2017. And we, I'm still um, 
keeping that sentence applications will be accepted yeah. until position is filled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to let people know that. Um, That's a good idea. To take the priority when the ball's out. When, when it's starting. Yeah. I like that. Good job. Very good. Okay. So okay. So keep that. All right. Uh, next item is the former center school purchase and sale remediation. I, I did receive a verbal, uh, a verbal from the developer, Barry Roberts, supporting the board's actions to, um, for him to take care of the remediation of the former center school. And he has consulted with his attorney. I spoke with attorney Brack at town council last Friday, I believe it was. Uh, he had anticipated a, a draft, some type of a formal agreement or letter of acceptance to do that, um, but I have not received that. Town Council will be here tomorrow evening. I'm expecting that he will probably. I did reach out to him earlier today. I haven't heard from him, um, but I'm hopeful that he'll have that tomorrow. So, I, and I don't anticipate any any problems. Okay. Capital Improvement Planning Projects uh, Review. That committee will be, has sent out their schedule to all the departments. Board of Selectmen is scheduled to review their projects with the Capital Planning Committee December 8th. I don't have to worry about that. So between now and December 8th, we need to, we, we, I'd like to be reviewing projects going forward, ones being the Prospect Court Bridge pedestrian bridge mm -hmm. project. IT? IT. We met with IT, uh, our IT support Paragus last week and asked them to do a, an assessment analysis of, of what we have in place and what will require a uh, number of, of computers or printers that need to be replaced and, and even the software programs that we're, we, we have in place and, you know, if we can Maybe perhaps we should be looking at something that, that's compatible, you know, a, a software program that's compatible for all our needs. So they, they had said they would have something to us in the middle of November. Okay. okay. Good. So we're looking at the hardware that we just need to replace. It's serviced, it's, it's, it's completed its service life. And we're looking at, as Marlene said, uh, some integrative software so that Enter data once, used many times, so maybe something that the assessor's entered, but the accountant doesn't have to go re-enter the same stuff, it can move around. Part of, so they're looking at software packages that might help facilitate work across the board, board throughout the financial needs. team here. Yeah. Uh, looking at recovery and reconstitution, uh, things like the cloud, mm -hmm. uh, use of the cloud. Storage and retrieval, uh, and in, in particular, how that might facilitate responses consistent with uh, the new information requirements public or records public records uh, yeah. information. So we got a lot going, a lot of opportunities in the IT area that really can help us, mm. perhaps, reduce unnecessary work and free up uh, some time. Mm. And we you mentioned the. You mentioned the uh, the bridge, <clears throat> and we need to get something in by the first of December, and DPW needs to do that. That goes to CPC because we're going to look for some additional funds. The other thing, uh, again, for DPW, the phase three feasibility for town hall, uh, moving yes. beyond mm -hmm. what we're talking about now, the immediate uh, compliance and those kinds of things, but. What are the total needs of COA? What are the needs of the museum? Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at least I, doing the requirements definition and prioritization and costing. So we'll have that for future years. And the architect had provided the town with, with figures for phase three for the museum, cable but TV studio, but th that was several months ago earlier. They were very the rough. Year. They were very rough. Right. So we'd have to revisit those numbers, and I would expect there'd probably be a slight increase. Um, the, park, the park study, 
I haven't received notice from from the state on that award yet. Or okay, well, our our application. Nope. Perhaps we should get with. That's another thing uh, with open space. Okay, the next piece of the park. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing the phase one with a phase second phase to come come later. Yeah, I'm just reading in the newspaper. I think Northampton was awarded, and, and I think it's along that same category, just they would be in the city's yeah. um, bracket. And so I, I'm expecting that we should hear something soon. Um, just, just to back up for a moment to the, uh, regarding IT, we, we've had uh, space issues on the servers, and so we've had to spend some money this year. Um, I mean, it, it needs to be done. It wasn't anticipated when we were developing the budget, and um, that was something that I had pointed out to them, and all the more reason why we had this meeting uh, last week with, with Paragus. Uh, but there, there were problems um, with space, and they've needed to increase that space. Never enough storage and never enough bandwidth. Yeah. Paragus will give us a, um, an indication as to the cost that's going to be involved associated yes. with that. Yes. And so that we can then move forward collectively rather than just part-timing it. Right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Great. Are they doing, um, is Paragus, have we asked them to do a large picture of this building behind us and behind us, or or have we said just this building? I mean, what what is it we're asking them well, to we're, scope out? We're talking about... Or the whole Overall, town. the entire town, Great. you know, all the departments, not the school. We didn't I, I think the school used, I don't think they used Perry as well. I know they I have an IT so. uh, and staff, staff yep. on staff, correct? IT person staff, but this is yes, is for all, you know, mm -hmm. emergency all services, yeah, sure. all the, wherever all the departments. located. Yeah, we also addressed current issues, yeah, sure. And well. the emergency services buildings yeah. does have an issue with connecting to the server. Uh, so they're looking into that as well as the water, water treatment plant. Yeah. Is there a, do we know, is there an actual physical connection between this building and the emergency management or are they simply using a wireless router? Which I think was up in a window I or something believe, if I'm not mistaken. Is that a wireless router? I, and I only yeah. say that because it might be worth putting in a physical line, line mm. underground, um, fiber optic Would cable, use. I mean, it only needs to go 100 yards. And it, it's just, maybe that's something Paragus may or may not recommend mm -hmm. um, that connects directly to the server room and goes right there. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, you could keep the wireless connection and use one or the other, or one could be a backup, backup. to the other. So, mm. I mean, the buildings Good are idea. so close that, right. so, um, but that, you know, just, it, well, I don't that, know if that's part of their plan. That is something they were going plan. to look at is the connection back there. I, I would also think that part of the connectivity from the emergency building, emergency service building behind us to, 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 to the cloud, to this building, to whatever, um, probably, and I don't know if there's funding for it, state or federal, but if it's done through the emergency management committee, maybe there's some sort of grants or something that allows them to mm -hmm. have a secondary path for emergency communications or something like that, that maybe there's something we could tap into. I don't know if, if Steven or Cindy or anybody would know anything about that, but that just might be worth something that would help pay for some sort of a backup. Um, yeah, that's we always have the radios, right? But in an emergency, you know, the radio is a radio. It's not the doesn't give you all the bandwidth you necessarily yeah. need. Well, depending through the firefighters' assistant is. grant, that um, yeah, just anything, any possible. sort of funding source that mm -hmm. can that can help. Um, well, that's a, that's a good point because <clears throat> what we're talking about really is trying to define the two B state, and we're not going to get there in one year. Right, it's going to be phased over some years. Mm -hmm. And another opportunity in talking about grants, part of the uh, the governor's initiative, there there are opportunities for. Uh, looking at IT and uh, mm. grants related to right to the community commonwealth through the community uh, com yeah the compact we compact. talked about that yeah right. that's another we, we we didn't put a niche under under that rubric but we're not prohibited from coming back again right. for another dip that's right. yeah yeah that's uh, which would be a, a source of funds to 
mm -hmm. take care of some of this. Well, and, and last year, actually before we had received that award from, from um, <clears throat> Governor Excuse Baker's me. office, I had a conversation with Superintendent Robert, and that was something they were interested in. Um, so something, you know, again, it's a best practice if that's mm -hmm. listed and provides I mean, longer term assistance. integrating their IT or I think, you know, just to, they're looking, they're interested in technical assistance yeah. to look okay. at their, uh, it's ever their changing. IT needs. I mean, it's, it's yeah. ever changing as we know. It's it, it very does. fluid. So it's, it's almost difficult yeah. to keep up with it. Right. Yeah. It takes money. If it's going to be done appropriately, then best do it now and develop the overall the, the plan. And uh, you know what's the cost projection, and then how it how it gets phased in, mm -hmm. so that we don't have to keep running back to the town for more money. Well, we thought you took care of that. You can alter you took a plan, care of it. but you got to have the plan to start with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Marilyn. Thanks for the update. Welcome. <clears throat> Uh, municipal aggregation plan. Uh, we received a letter from the Department of Energy Resources. They reviewed our plan. There was a telephone conference um, that I sat in <coughs> on with Excuse other me. communities from the state. And at this point, our plan will now be uh, filed with the Department of Public Utilities, and they're required to have a hearing. And once the hearing, when they've approved that plan, um, the selectmen will accept and sign the electric service agreement. Um, that is something that Colonial Powers will prepare. Will, will prepare. And then the notification of enrollment to the eligible customers. So there will be a notice that will, will go out. And, and there's a 30-day opt-out period. Um, so just looking at the, the timeline that's set up in the plan, that could pretty much take about 60 days from start to, from the time the Board of Selectmen signed the electric service agreement, 60 days out for the um, notification, the 30-day opt-out period, and then to, to get people. So we're, we're moving along we on the overall master along. schedule for this activity. We are. Mm -hmm. And it took DOER a page and a half to tell us we concur. <laughs> Well, they had three or four people working on it. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> Unanticipated new business. Um, Marlene and I did some uh, talking about the use of the terminology, uh, unanticipated new business. Um, I'm wondering, and I intend to sit down with Marlene and hopefully with town council, uh, if uh, that is appropriate without our posting it. Uh, for the, uh, I mean, we're posting it here, but we're not posting the nature of what that anticipated new business is. No. We are required to, if something should come up between the time the the agenda posted. is posted, and if it's something that that is required, you know, that requires the attention of the Board of Selectmen, I must notify or somebody notifies the town, town clerk, clerk. Okay. and it needs to be reasonable. And she would revise, we would revise the agenda. It, it has, you have to give some type of reasonable notice. And understandably, if it is something that does require the Board of Selectmen's immediate attention, I would notify the town clerk immediately. Right, which uh, we had and, discussed, and we're obviously in total agreement. My concern is, is that, the, is it overall appropriate for all the things that, fall under unanticipated new business. I think it, it's, it's one thing to list new business. Let us determine what we're projecting as new business and does it have to be done now or does it, is it possible to you know, simply move it forward uh, to the next meeting? Well, I, I, I think, um, so we, we have to post our meeting and the agenda 48 hours? Right. So I, I believe that what, what that's doing is if for some sort of emergency came up within that 48-hour period, mm -hmm. uh, we could now address right. it as yeah. on it, having been unanticipated right. because we didn't know it about it at the time. It would be addressed as unanticipated. It was, I, and I don't know what that, you know, a contract needs to be signed or, yeah. you know, a, the ceiling fell in on somewhere, sure. some you know, yesterday. Yeah. Um, 
I, I mean, I know what you're saying, Pat. I, I think the, quite honestly, we, as a board and and, and as the, the the government, small governmental body here, uh, have never really used it's that. Very very careful about. Well, yeah, that. that's what I mean. It's the terminology. I, that, yeah, I, uh, I get it. You don't want to be problem people with. throwing things in there. That's but, a standard but it's terminology just, uh, used yeah. Yeah. across the state um, by communities across the state. It's I just. Did. It's consistent with the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's, mm -hmm. that's it, the it key. A, that's what this yeah. is all about, is the open, not trying to yeah. pull a fast one on the open meeting law, but and which we, we haven't done. Quite and we no, have not it hasn't been it. done. No. No. But we're also looking down the road as well. <laughs> yeah. What do we interpret this, this particular category to mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean just anything gets, uh, is unanticipated. No. Nope. There's a solid ground for it right. to be dealt with. And uh, otherwise it can wait until the, the board next... of selectmen has always dealt in that manner. O otherwise it can wait till the next meeting or right. we just call another meeting with the seven, okay. 48 hour notice. And, and we've done that in the past actually. Um, okay. not, not recently, but we, you know, something came up and had to be signed in a deadline that nobody kind of knew about. It was like, oh, we better, you know, we got to take care of this. So. Every once in a while it's good to remind ourselves. Yeah. Okay, um, um, anything well, else, Marlene? Yes, just lastly, um, the Green Communities Technical Assistance. Uh, I, I've reached out to Catherine Rete at PVPC. She's our representative mm -hmm. um, for this technical assistance program, and I just wanted to chat with her uh, about going forward, and I haven't, re you know, touched base with her, so I, um, I expect I'll have information for our next meeting on this. Okay. And, and when we'll be setting up the meetings. To when meet is her. the uh, next round of grants from DOER with respect to energy projects? That really ought to be the benchmark we back up from to engage PVPC to work on helping us with grants. I believe it's March. Okay, okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll find out, but I... Yeah, I'll, I'll confirm. I'm just saying we ought to keep that in mind mm -hmm. when, when they're due. That's um, all the items I have. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Second, just, just a reminder that tomorrow is, in fact, the special town meeting at 7 o'clock at the elementary school, so I hope everybody can show up and let their opinion be, be heard. Okay. Yep. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, okay. John. Thank you, Thank John. You, Keith.